Hi, second graders. Welcome back to Reader's Workshop. Today, we're going to start by doing something a little bit different than what we've usually been doing. So I'm going to show you this beautiful, famous picture. And we're going to look really closely and study this picture. So I'm going to pull up my picture on my screen for you. Now, this picture is by a famous artist, and the name of it is called A Sunday Afternoon on an Island. So let's go look at this beautiful picture. Here we go. Okay, so if we look really closely at this picture, right away you can notice that there's lots of people in this picture. So it looks like there's a lot of people with umbrellas, maybe trying to shade themselves from the sun. We see some dogs, right? Now this picture looks like it might have been painted a long time ago just by looking at the pictures or the picture of what the people are wearing, right? So we see some tall hats, maybe a cane, these long dresses. People don't really wear things like this anymore. So we can tell that it was maybe made a long time ago. But if we look even closer at this picture, let's see if we can even zoom, if we can zoom in a little bit. So if we zoom in, we can actually see that the painter who made this picture made this picture by doing just a bunch of little dots all over the paper. So they didn't actually draw it, they did a bunch of little dots, and all of those dots made up parts of the picture, right? If we zoom in, we can see all these dots they need to create this beautiful picture. So by looking at this picture, right, we can think about how the painter used so many beautiful details to create an amazing picture. So books are actually a lot like paintings and authors are a lot like painters. So just like when we notice what the painter did by using those dots, we can also notice what authors do to paint a vivid picture for the readers. So vivid picture means that when we're reading it, we can see, almost see it in our minds to think, think about what it might look like. So today we're gonna to think about this question, what do authors do to paint a vivid picture with words? Now today I'm gonna to read us a few pages of one of the most amazing books of all time, it's called James and the Giant Peach. And I'm not going to show you any pictures, but I want you to do is I want you to think about what are the ways that the author, whose name is Roald Dahl, what are the ways that the author is painting a picture with words? So listen carefully and let's listen to what we notice about the words the author is using. Chapter one. Here is James Henry Trotter when he was about four years old. Up until this time, he had a happy life living peacefully with his mother and father in a beautiful house beside the sea. There were always plenty of other children for him to play with, and there was the sandy beach for him to run about on and the ocean to paddle in. It was the perfect life for a small boy. Then one day, James's mother and father went to London, London to do some shopping, and there a terrible thing happened. Both of them suddenly got eaten up in full daylight, mind you, and on a crowded street by an enormous angry rhinoceros which had escaped from the London Zoo. Now this, as you can well imagine, was a rather nasty experience for two such gentle parents, but in the long run, it was far nastier for James than it was for them. Their troub troubles were all over in a jiffy. They were gone in 35 seconds flat. Poor James, on the other hand, was still very much alive, and then all at once he found himself alone and frightened in a vast, unfriendly world. The lovely house by the seaside had to be sold immediately, and the little boy, carrying nothing but a small suitcase containing a pair of pajamas and a toothbrush, was sent away to live with his two aunts. Now, if we think about what's happening in this story so far, we can almost picture it in our minds. Like, it's almost like a movie or a painting in our head. Right? So the author is describing where this little boy, James, lives with his parents. And then all of a sudden, something terrible happens to his parents. They get eaten by a rhinoceros, which is so crazy. But now he gets sent to live with his aunt. So let's figure out what his aunts are like. Their names were Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. And I'm sorry to say that they were both really horrible people. They were selfish, and lazy, and cruel, and right from the beginning, they started beating poor James for almost no reason at all. They never called him by his real name, but always referred to him as you disgusting little beast or you miserable creature, and they certainly never gave him any toys to play with or any pictures, books to look at. His room was as bare as a prison cell. They lived on Sponge and Spiker, and now James as well, in a queer shit ramshackle house on the top of a high hill in the south of London. The hill was so high that from almost anywhere in the garden, James could look down and see for miles and miles across a marvelous landscape of woods and fields. And on a very clear day, if he looked in the right direction, he could see a tiny gray dot far away on the horizon, which was the house that he used to live in with his beloved mother and father. And just beyond that, he could see the ocean itself, a long thin streak of blackish blue, like a line of ink beneath the rim of the sky. So 
right? We can listen to the words that the author is using and describing in this story, right? So we can think about the words that he used, right? So he's talking about what the house looked like, what the aunts were like, what the new house that he had to live in looked like. So if I listen to the words, right, I can almost picture it in my head. But now I can also look at the picture in the story and I can see if it matches what my idea was in my head. So this is the new house that James has to live in on top of the big hill with his poor little ants. They don't look very nice. If you look at their faces, they look pretty mean. So I'm gonna show you this chart. That's all about how authors can paint pictures with words. So if I look at my chart, let's pull it up one second. So it says, how do authors paint pictures with words? So they can describe the setting, like the author and James and the giant peach gym. They can include sound words like crash. They can use small actions and include lots of dialogue or the, author, or the characters talking to each other. So today when you're reading, I really want you to pay, make sure that you're paying extra attention to all the ways that the authors are painting a picture with the words in, their, in the story, because it will help you understand the story, the character, and the series even better. So when you're reading today, you can take, take notes on post-it notes, so you can keep track of the ways that the author is describing certain things and helping you to imagine something and paint a picture in your head. Remember, when you're reading, you want to make sure that you're reading the whole time and really pay attention to what the author is saying. Off you go.